are done now in Nerdland and have picked up everything there. Uh, we now decided to put the machines into another room at the store of Siegfried's Mechanische Musikkabine. We're going to build up a cabinet on that wall where we will put all the stuff in we got from Martin that we have direct access to the tools, to screws, to washers and everything else. That will help us to more easily finish the MMX. So we're back with the machine in Rudesheim after a visit to Belgium at Nerdland where we had it at a festival. Sitting inside of a tent on a wooden floor so it was a bit shaky but now that we moved it we can still start by putting all the things back which had to be taken away during moving and then of course there's also the final parts for the mounting for the vibraphone which we still need to start on. holders for the rack so as you can see one short one and one long one because it's slanted to match the vibraphones um, what slant to the machine now it just needs to match the two holes I drilled during uh, Nerdland festival so this is the old version of the rack which Martin designed more than a year ago at this point. There's angles so that the droppers would end up facing the audience, but the rack itself would match the angle of the vibraphone. But what ended up happening is, since the droppers have to be mounted at an angle, we ended up having a compound angle, which meant that all the droppers were slanted also this way. They would send the marbles not straight down, to not have to deal with the weight of this thing, because it is quite heavy, it's, it's steel. The wood prototype was designed uh, in November, which has a bit of a frame for support and has the same slant just to be able to position it with clamps and, and magic arms. And that just made us realize that it w didn't work. <laughs> it still didn't work. And after, after that discovery, we looked at the CAD and saw there was a mistake in the CAD. A, a major oversight, let's put it that way. Uh, we designed this one, which is very similar in principle. It's just that instead of having an angle to have the droppers face directly forwards, uh, the whole rack is just a rig with perpendicular teeth. This adds no skew to the dropper's angle. The droppers drop perfectly straight down. We put this up at first with magic arms like we did for the first one. Put two, two droppers on it, one on each end, and dropped the marbles on the corresponding vibraphone plates. It worked perfectly fine. And then I designed, well we designed, the, the first mouse to make sure we had the right distance from this rack to the frame itself. And the well, basic bent sheet metal prototype worked fine. So I took those dimensions, put them in CAD, and then first made a prototype for those holders out of plastic. That didn't hold the weight. We tested that at Nordland. But at least it showed us that it was the right positioning for the, the rack and the droppers. So now what we did this weekend is uh, I remade them out of aluminum stock, 10 millimeter aluminum. Yeah, so that's the rack, the dropper rack adventure. I guess that this, this part is con can be concluded now. The only thing missing is what's coming up next and is being worked on right now is the droppers. Today we've been, apart from mounting uh, the marble gate brackets, we've been uh, looking at marble gates as well, except that these ones which we started assembling uh, in November and then worked on, now we notice that basically the shafts were sometimes wobbly or basically not properly uh, aligned to both sides, so we knocked them out after heating them, so the Loctite bond is broken. The plan is that we take the jig, uh, made from Acecraft. We put it over the axle, 
clamp the jig in place, then shove the axle, retract it a bit, put some dab of Loctite in and then just let it sit like those three over there. Those can now sit overnight and then maybe tomorrow the axle will be back in place like for example this one, solid. And then we can put all those wheels which we had to remove back on and hopefully yeah, get some working marble gates going again. Still left to do was some more grinding because we noticed that some welds were sticking out of the top of the surface. But this needs to go onto the marble rack and well it needs to sit flush with it. So the flatter the better and now you should see that it's nice and clean. Another one of those things that needed doing was to prepare the back side of the gate so that we can mount pipe clamps on them. And because we forgot to finish these holes before welding them, we now needed to drill, tap, sometimes fix the hardened parts of the holes because it's laser cut. Ellie and Margaret have been having a whole lot of fun doing basically nothing than just fixing these on the drill press and then tapping by hand. But hopefully once everything else on this is mounted, just screw this on. Then have fun bending the pipes to fit in those and we can simply lock everything in place by clamping this thing together. Another thing that needs doing is that the screw we put into the pallet was a bit on the long side. The bottom one you can see sticks out way more, except that if the pallet moves, it will of course also stick out and then hit the body of the vibraphone gate support rack. You can see the black line here and then it might interact with that. We simply replaced it with a shorter screw, but now it still needs a bit of heat shrink to make sure that the wheel lands on it softly. So now that all the gates are pretty much assembled, we still need to test them again so we can do this on the table and not having to put them on the machine, adjust them or take them off again, tighten everything up and put them back. Basically just on a clamp, uh, we've got the old frame, some tubing, now we got them loaded and everything goes well. Oop. Marble on the table. So yeah, there's definitely something wrong. Although this time it actually worked the best time since we tried it. But marbles tend to simply roll out of here. So what needs to happen is that this top bar needs some readjustment in relationship to the two bottom bars so that the marbles are always constrained. Without actually clamping on them too much because otherwise we will simply trap them and the gate won't spin either. Right till the end. First time it worked.
you for watching. If you wonder where MM and MMX have went, they're across the road since we're in the middle of preparation for the Wintergatan community meetup. So subscribe to our channel so you don't, don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Oh. Fertig. Oh.